am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Here is another lesson with Aryan. Aryan is a bright student who is in grade 8 trying to do grade 11 mathematics in United States. This particular course called Mathematics 3 is difficult even for normal students who have graduated from grade 10 to grade 11. However, for Aryan, things have been very smooth so far. He is getting more than 90% marks and scoring 100% in many test papers. Here is a lesson on parametric equations. As you understand, parametric equations is a difficult chapter in itself. Now let us see, how do we get the concepts of parametric equations and how can a grade 8 student perform so well on this topic also. In this video, you will learn what are parametric equations, how do we work with them, that is to say, how can we sketch a graph of a parametric equation? How can we write parametric equation in terms of the normal equation in x and y, which we call rectangular equation? And how do we relate from the equation the graph? Another important thing which you are going to understand in this particular video is a real life situation. Very complex problems can be solved using parametric equation, including this one, which is the rights which you enjoy in daily life. I hope this video will give you good insight on this particular topic. Hi, Aryan. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Very good. Very good. So, uh, Aryan, today, what do you want to do? Um, can we cover a parametric system for this class? Yeah. Parametric <laughs> equations? Yeah. yeah. So let me tell, uh, let me share with all my viewers that Aryan actually is a grade 8 student doing grade 11 mathematics and he wants to do parametric equations today. Okay, Aryan, let's see what you have. Uh, let me okay. try to help you as much as I can. Why do right. you share with me? Uh, uh, whatever equations you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, I put it in the chat. Sure. Okay, putting in the chat. Okay. Can you see these equations which you shared with me? Yeah, I can see them. I can see them. Okay, so first thing first, Arya, can you tell me what are parametric equations? Yeah, so um, basically parametric equations are a set of equations that have multiple sets of quantities and um, they use like multiple independent variables, which are also called as parameters. Got it. So normally, when we see the equation at this level, we are considering the xy plane, right? Yeah. Uh, now, let me annotate. So, so if you want to draw an equation, you're always looking into xy plane. Yeah. You'll write x-axis and y-axis and some graph you can plot. Let's say if there's a straight line, you'll draw something like this, where the relation is y equals to mx plus so These yeah. are the normal equations which we had been looking into. So now we are talking about parametric equations, the example being given here. We separately write what x is and what y is. Correct? And yeah. then we could actually plot them on the coordinate plane also. So as given in your exercise, which is the curve of each pair of parametric equation, right? So that is what we need to do, sketch the curve of each pair of parametric equation. So the very first one is x equals to t, y equals to t square over four. Can you tell me what kind of curve do we expect from this? Um, I'm, at, I'm expecting kind of like a, like a curve that you'd see for like a parabola. Uh, it's a little, 
Yeah. Yes. T squared, what you see here, T squared indicates that it could be a parabola, right? Yeah. So if you want to really sketch this, what we could do is that we can make a table, right? So make a table for different values of uh, T because T is your parameter and calculate what X is. So in the table, you have to put some values of T and for each value, calculate what X is, X is equals to T. So we get one set. And for the corresponding value, find what Y is. So Y is equals to T squared over four, correct? Yeah. So let us say, if I put T as zero, let me write zero here. In that case, X is zero and Y is also zero. And that will give us a point right there in the origin is the point, right? Yeah. Intersection of X and Y X. So that becomes our first point. Perfect. Now, let me take T as 2 because I don't want to get into fractions. 2 square is 4. So 4 divided by 4 will give me 1, correct? So if yeah. I take 2 as the point T, in that case, X will be 2. And y will be 2 squared over oh. 4, which is 4 over 4, which is 1. So we have a coordinate point, 2, 1, right? So this point, 2, 1, will be right there. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. Perfect. We could have taken, now let's take minus 2 as another point. So x will be minus 2. y value will be again. Minus 2 squared is also 4, right? So we say minus 2 squared divided by 4, which is also giving us 1. So at minus 2, we again get 1. Perfect? Yeah. Uh, I would prefer to take even numbers since we do not want to get into fractions. We have y equals to 2 t squared over 4, right? So we are going yeah. into those multiples. Anyway, so if I take 4, we get 16, which is, uh, let's take 4 now. So if I take 4 as t, x becomes 4, and 4 squared, 16, divided oh. by 4, will oh. give what? 4 itself, correct? Yeah. So at 4, I get a point which is 4. Similar, for minus 4, I'll get x value of minus 4, and the y value plus 4. So that will be my next point. Correct? Now we can take 6. So if I take 6, for example, x will be 6, and y will be 6 squared divided by 4. 36 divided by 4 will be 9, correct? Yeah. So we have this 9 at 6, which is like away here. And for minus 6 also, I'm going to get the same point. Perfect? Yeah. So we can join these points and make the curve. So we have this parabola as expected. Perfect? Is that clear to you? Yeah. We expected a parabola which we have. So, as you can see, a parabola, which is say y equals to x squared, can also be written in parametric form. Correct? Yeah. So, interesting part here is. Can you actually write this in the standard way, like we write in standard form of parabola, parabolic equation, quadratic equation? Can you do that, Aryan? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, you can, you can, yeah. How will you do it? x equals to t and y is equals to t squared over 4. Yeah. This gives you, t is x, right? You know, Just substitute. X. So we can substitute here. So we get x squared over 4. And so we have the equation, which is y equals to 1 fourth of x squared. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So that becomes the equation for the parametric equation given to us. And here is our graph for the same. This is absolutely clear. Yeah, that's great. Perfect. So we have done the first one. And now let's try the next one. So let me clear the screen. So yeah. uh, help me doing the next one. I'm going to clear the screen now. Okay. Right. How will you do the graph for our second question, which is x equals to minus 2t plus 2, y is 4t squared over 5 minus 2. 
and t now is given in the restricted domain from minus two to three. You see that? Correct. So yeah. Do this now. Again, the method is similar. We'll make the same table, taking different values of t, calculating the value of x, which will be minus two t plus two, and corresponding values for y, which are going to be four t squared. Over five minus two. We are yes. going to calculate values from minus two, minus two, minus one, zero, zero. One, two, and three. Is that okay? Calculate yes. values. Can you tell me the values that you get for x? If I write minus two, what do you get for x? Ah, uh, you get six. You get six. And for y? Um. Is it a four t squared? Yeah, it is four t squared divided by five. Divided by five okay. minus two. Yeah, tell me. Um, so minus two, approximately in decimal. Tell me. Oh, decimal. Okay, yeah. So it'd be like sixteen fifths over, like minus two. Yeah. Tell me. Uh, calculate the value of decimal and tell me. We'll just just put that back. Uh, one point two. And if you substitute minus one, what do you get? Um, you just get four fifths minus two. So this is negative one point two. X value. X value. Minus. Two. Oh, oh I, uh, okay. Yeah. Then um, you get um, you just get four. And y value. Your y value would just be um, four point eight minus two. So this is negative one point two. If I put zero, then I get two here and minus two here. That's simple. If I put yeah. one, then what do I get? If you put one, then you just get zero for x. Zero on y value, uh, you get negative one point two. If I put two, then uh, you get okay for two. You just get negative two. Y value? Uh, your y value would just be um, one point two. And if I put three, uh, negative four for your x value. Yeah. And then you would get five point two for your y value. Five point. Now we have to put these points on the coordinate plane to sketch the graph, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that is one thing we can do. Now, second part here is that we could also write the equation and see what type of graph do we expect now, correct? So yeah. we have x equals to minus 2t plus 2, right? I can rearrange yeah. and write what t is equal to. So x minus 2 equals to minus 2t. And when I divide x minus 2 by minus 2, I get the value of t. Is that okay? So yeah. that's value of t. Substituting that value in this equation, we can find what y is. So y is equal to 4 times, we can do x minus 2 over minus 2 whole square, yeah. uh, x minus 2 over minus 2 whole square divided by 5 yeah. minus 2. Now I did not really change it because minus 2 whole square will make it positive, so I can keep it as such, right? Yeah. So when you open this, minus 2 becomes 4. So we get here x minus 2 whole square by 5 minus yeah. two. Basically, it is one fifth of x minus 2 whole square minus 2. Is that minus. Right? Yeah, that's correct. So again, we are expecting a parabola whose vertex is at 2 minus 2. You get the idea? So the yeah. vertex is at 2 minus 2. So you can yeah. Vertex at 2 minus 2, uh, uh, that is the x value. So which is, let me highlight in our equation. So that is the vertex which we are looking at. Is that clear to you? I'm yes. trying to relate the parametric equation with the calculation of x and y value so that when we plot it, what do we get? This is what we're looking into the equation. 
So that everything comes together at this stage. Is that okay? Yeah. So yeah. This is a parabola, which is symmetric along this particular axis because the vertex is there. And you can see at minus 1, it is minus 1.2. And also at 1, it is minus 1.2. Right? Yeah. So that and this parabola is opening upwards as the values are increasing. Right? So, so at minus uh, so we have this value at 2 minus 2 and at 4 it is minus 1.2. So if I go to 4, I get minus 1.2. I am writing approximately here, right? Similar. If I go to 0, so symmetrically, do you see that symmetrically coming up? Yeah. We have taken care of these two values and now with minus 2, we get 1.2. So positive, right? So minus 2 Minus 2 is 1.2, so you go slightly above this, and similarly, you'll find that here also it is slightly above this, right? Since we have restricted our domain from minus 2 to 3, we'll only sketch it up to 5.2. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. At 3, the value of TST, we have x as minus 4. So at minus 4, we have 5.2. Slightly more than 5. Okay. So that becomes the value. And at minus 2, it is 1.2. So we do have a parabola again, which could be sketched like this. Okay. Yeah. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So that is the part of parabola, which will follow this particular equation, y equals to 1 over 5x minus 2 whole square minus 5. And can be plotted as shown in the graph. So yeah. I'll say to you, uh, Aryan. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain me what have you understood from this example? And then we will move forward. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're given like what we're given, like you are using the information that is given to like go from like that specific form into like the standard form of a parabola. And then we're just like graphing the parabola to like see if we're correct. Yes, this is standard form. Perfect. So we have done these two examples. Now let's move on to the next, which involves some trigonometric functions. We have x equals to 5 sine t, y equals to 4 cos t. What type of graph do we expect now? Um, it's going to be like a very complex graph because we be a very complex graph right <laughs> said so. perfect so let's try to figure this complex graph how will it look like our procedure is going to be same now what we have here is x equals to 5 sine t and y equals to 4 cos t right now if yes. i convert this equation standard form which I mean to say x and y, correct? Eliminating the parameter t. So how can you eliminate parameter t? Well, you know Pythagorean identity, right? Which is sine square t plus cos square t is equal to what? Um, so, yeah. so from here, we can get what sine t is, what cos t is, We'll get equation in x, y, and we will get an idea. What type of figure are we expecting? Can you suggest, can you think what type of figure will you get here? What is that complicated figure which you are expecting? Um, yes. So um, I'll, I'll, to x over 5 from this equation, correct? And yeah. cos t is what? Cos t is y over 4, correct? So, substituting in the given equation, we get x over 5 whole square plus y over 4 whole square should be equal to 1, correct? Oh, in the whoops. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. This is a very familiar equation to you, correct? Yeah. What is this? It it's is? an ellipse. It's an ellipse. So we get an ellipse, right? Major axis being along the x-axis. So we get something like this, correct? Yeah. Right? 
Yes. If you translate the equation into what you are very familiar with, it becomes easier to work with. You get the idea. Yeah. So that is how we are going to do it. And now, what we are going to do is, uh, I leave this as an exercise for you. So you can again uh, calculate the values for different values of t, right? We yeah. know it is going to be something like this, which is an ellipse. And ellipse will have a limited domain. We have to go through the major axis, correct? And the yeah. minor axis. So we know the domain and range for this particular function, correct? Yeah. So for different values of t, you can now calculate this. It would be a good idea just to take some values uh, and then calculate. So these are the radian values. Is that okay? Yes. T is in radians. So T is in radians. Correct? So 3.14 is pi. Yeah. Pi, right? So, uh, or could be, we could just use uh, uh, pi, right? Pi or pi by 2, correct? Is that clear to you? Yeah. So, let me take value of t as uh, uh, what I will do this time is I will write the x values and the y values and take t values here. Okay. So, we will take t values because we are talking about sine and cosine. Yeah. Well, just try out. So if I take the t value as, let us say, let me start with zero, then what do we get? Sine of zero is zero, right? Zero. X value is yeah. zero. But yeah. y is four because cos of zero is one, right? So y value will be four. Is that clear? Yeah. Sorry. So let's take another value, which is pi by two. So if I take pi by two, Sine pi by 2 is 1, right? Yeah. Times 5 will give me 5 this value. How cos pi by 2 is 0. So I get a 0 here, right? Yeah. So if I take pi, then what do I get? Sine pi is how much? Sine graph. When it is pi, it is again 0, right? Yeah. And so cos pi will be minus 1. Minus, so one. minus 4. You get the idea? Yeah. Let's go to this side, minus pi by 2. So minus pi by 2, well, cos is going to be 0. However, sine in minus yeah. pi by 2 is going to be minus 1. And therefore, this value will be minus 5, correct? Yes. Yeah. And if I go to minus pi, in that case, sine pi zero. is 0 and cos pi is Four. minus pi. And it is symmetric. Cos function is symmetric, yeah. right? So this will be minus two. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's plot these points for time being. So at zero. So these are the coordinate points which we are going to plot, x and y points, right? Zero, yeah. four. So at zero, we have four. Is that the idea? Oh. At zero, yeah. we have four, correct? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now at um, negative four, that's what I was trying to say. And also negative four. Yeah, yeah that's what I was yeah. looking for, right? And negative four and negative four. On the other hand, uh, for minus 5, we get 0. So at minus 5, we get 0. And at plus 5, also, we get 0. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> so it's no loops. That becomes an ellipse. You can always fill in the other points. Is that OK? Yeah. But we have an ellipse right there. And we can actually connect these points and say, well, this is our graph. Yeah. Okay, so make a better list for it. But that is how you can actually create. So once again, when you're working on parametric equations, it's a good idea to get the standard form. So when you have a view or the idea how the graph is going to look like, that will help you to select the right values and to sketch the graph. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Okay. So we have done this part. Let's try the next question. Can you please read this question and tell me what is going to be your approach to find uh, the equation for this and how do we sketch it? Yes. So, um, okay. So we're given that X is equal to two secant T. Yes. And Y is equal to four ten T. Yes. So then we, it's kind of like a trig identity. 
Yes. So then we could just convert them into the, like their respective like forms, and then we could just go go about there just this plot some points. So the trick identity relating secant and tangent is the Pythagorean identity which you're talking about. Yeah. One plus tan square t is equal to secant square t. We can rewrite this as secant square t minus tan square t equals to one. That makes sense, correct? Yeah. And therefore, we just need to isolate what secant t is here. So from this equation, we can write down secant t is equal to half of x and tan t is equal to one fourth of y. Is that clear to you? Substituting yeah. these values, mm -hmm. we get x over 2 whole square minus, minus y over 4 whole square equals equal to 1. To now that is, can you tell me what is this? We have a hyperbola. Perfect. So we have a hyperbola here. Correct. So you can now catch the hyperbola again. Take the value and then make your table, right? So we'll again make a similar table just as we did last time. Yeah. Uh, so you could find what the value of x will be and what is the value of y, and you can select different value for t. Yeah. So this time, uh, well, the good values for t is always. Uh, you know the stand, you should know the domain and range, right? For this, perfect. Yeah. As far as the tan function is concerned, uh, we have a restriction on the function, correct? Because yeah. the tan is sine x over cos x, correct? Yeah. So there are restrictions on tan function. What values it cannot have? It cannot have the values which will make cos x as zero, correct? Yeah. Therefore, in this case, x is not equal to which values? Odd multiples of pi by 2, correct? So we have vertical asymptotes there. Yeah. So, so odd multiples of pi by 2, I can write 2n plus 1 times pi by 2, right? So these yeah. are the odd multiples of pi by 2, which will have a vertical asymptote. So I can have those values here, correct? Yeah. So y values will be infinitely large for those values. Okay? So yeah. other values we can have. So uh, secant t, as far as secant t is concerned, it is 1 over cos. Again, the same restriction, correct? Yeah. So both these functions cannot have odd multiples of pi by 2. But you could use all other values. Correct? Okay? Yeah. So you could use 0 pi like this. Or pi by 4, you could use pi by 4, correct? Yeah. So now be careful about this part and select the values. So for example, if I choose 0 as my value, in that case, what do I get? 0 and then put it back in. So you get Second, 0. D can yeah. will give me 1, right? Cos 0 is yeah. 1 and times 2, x value will be 2. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. But tan 0 is 0, and therefore we get 0 here. So we have a point 2, 0, correct? Yeah. Now, pi by 2 is not going to give us, but we can use uh, pi by 6, we can use pi by 3, we can use pi by 4. Yeah. Correct? Let's use pi by 4, for example. So if I use pi by 4, then for sine secant, secant pi by 4 is what? We're looking at special triangles now. So one special triangle is pi by 6. Let me just draw this for you. Yeah. I know I'm talking about pi by 4, but drawing this for now, because that is the next value which we are going to take, right? And yeah. The other one is what we are saying, pi by 4, okay? which is 1, 1 square root 2. Yeah. These are all right triangles. Yeah. <laughs> so when we say pi by 4, in that case, the secant value is square root 2. And 2 square root 2 will be the x value, right? Yeah. 
the y value is 1 for pi by 4 and therefore 4 times 1 will be 4. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So if I have minus pi by 4, in that case, what happens? Secant is even function, right? So yeah. I'll get the same value, which is 2 square root 2, correct? Yeah. Minus pi by 4. Uh, and tan is an odd function, right? So we use the function for odd function. I'm expecting a negative 4 value here. Is that okay? Yeah. Correct. I'm so sorry. Yeah. That was pi by 6. Correct. So for uh, uh, pi by 6, once again, negative. Well, let's calculate. So pi by 6, as far as the Secant is concerned, it is 2 over square root 3, right? So when I put 2 over square root 3, I get 4 over square root 3, 2 times, correct? As far as tan is concerned, for pi by 6, it is 1 over square root 3, so I get 4 over square root 3. Is that clear? Yeah. yeah. We'll get the same value because it is an even function, but negative of 4 over square root 3. Now, yeah. Let's get to pi by 3. Pi by 3 for secant is 2. 2 times yeah. 2 is 4. So we get x value is 4. For tan, pi by 3 is square root 3. Square root 3 times 4 is 4 squared. Yeah. So, so minus 4 square root 3 will be this. Correct? Right? Yeah. And as far as the... Uh, uh, sorry. Oh, what is this? No, wait, wait, wait. I'll do create another column. Let me write here, right? Minus pi by three. Minus pi by three. So I have here 4, and here I have minus 4 square root 3. Correct? Okay. So that is how we get all the points to sketch the hyperbole. Okay. Here. Can you plot the points? At 0, so we have 2, 0. So 2, 0. That is one of our points, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Next point, 4 um, by square root 3, 4 by square root 3. So can you tell me decimal value of 4 by square root 3? Yeah. It is just, uh, it's like 4 point, oh, I'm sorry, no, sorry, I got it wrong. It's like 2.30 something, something. <laughs> so 2.3, so slightly more than this, and 2.3 uh, means... Uh, 2.3 will be somewhere here, right? So yeah. that's, that's the next point. Is that okay? Yeah. Next point. And, and here also, because it is symmetric, right? So we get on both the sides. Yeah. And then 2 square root 2 is how much? Uh, 2 square root of 2 is like... Um, I think it, Okay, wait. No, sorry. My thing's wrong. Calculate, calculate. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Two point eight or something, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why I was. I, I thought it was two point eight. But. So I'll take three, right? Three, four. Yeah, right? take three. So I'll take three and four. So I'll put it here, kind of, because you know I'm making a very rough estimate here. So yeah. So we have three, four here, kind of. So what I'm trying to show here is that we have, we know, it's a hyperbola. So we have a graph like. This. Yeah. Is that clear to you? So we have a yeah. graph here. We can go for more values. And so we'll have a hyperbola graph, I mean, uh, we'll get this particular graph ultimately when you put in more values, Aryan, is that clear to you? Yeah. Yes, perfectly fine. So you see how parametric equations can be translated to the general coordinate uh, equations, algebraic equations, and how we can plot using the table of values which we just did here. Perfect? Yeah. Yeah. Is this process clear to you, Ari? It's clear, but it's just a little complicated because of like all the decimal values. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's uh, I'm fine. Is yeah. 
So basically, when you have a graph paper, you have to have a bigger graph paper so yeah. that you can accurately put the values, which are decimal values, in most of our calculations. Correct? But it gives you a good idea. So I like you to practice this. Let us take the next uh, few questions also. Okay. okay. So uh, let me just uh, pull this up. Perfect. Uh, what is the question, Arden? Can you please read the question? Yeah. It says x is equal to negative t squared over 3 and then y is equal to t. Okay. How will you do it? Write each pair of parametric equation in rectangular form. So now you know how to do it. Can you just yeah. do this and tell me the answer to it? Yeah. Yes, it's just um, x is equal to negative y squared over 3. So y equals to replace y is t, yeah. right? Yeah. And x is t squared over 3. So in this case, what you could do is you could put t as y, right? Yeah, that's, that's fine. So that is better. So what we will do here is we'll put, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. We'll put t as y. So we get x equals to minus y squared over 3. Over three. Right? So now we'll rearrange. And when you multiply, you get 3x equals to minus y squared. Is that clear to you? Yeah. 3x is equal to minus y squared in this particular case. And so that is the equation which you're going to get. Perfect. Yeah. So what is this? This is a parabola which opens in which direction? Uh, down, downwards. Okay. So because this is a that's vertical, so it is going to be kind of like this, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant, yeah that's right. <laughs> is what you meant? So that's yeah, what your yeah. equation is suggesting. So that is how you could write your equation. Okay? Yeah. The next one, which is x equals to t, y equals to t squared over 6 plus 2t over 3 minus 1 over 3. Since we know x is t, we'll write y as equal to what? y will be equals to x squared over 6, over six. plus 2 times x over 3 minus one, one and that gives you common denominator of six. and so we get 2x squared plus 4x minus oh, I don't think you need to do the 2x squared because it's it's just a common denominator and it's already on 6 so wouldn't this be x squared plus okay. 4x yeah so what we will do okay I wanted to write in a different way but you are right what we have to do here is we can just write this as a common factor yeah Correct. So we get y equals to, we write 1 over 6 as a common factor, and we have a quadratic equation, x squared plus, it goes to 2 times, 4x, four. Four right? Minus yeah. 2. two. Okay? So we and have yeah. this parabola. Correct? So it yeah. becomes a parabola which is, uh, you know, compressed vertically by a factor of 6, and this is what you could draw and get the equation. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm clear. Yeah. So next equation, what do you expect? Uh, so this is basically like the same, probably. Supposed to do the same. Parabola, correct? Yeah. The next one is. Uh, that that's like a circle, or it could also be an ellipse. Could also be an ellipse. Because it's both values ellipse. are different, right? Ellipse. Yeah, that's why it's an ellipse. So anyway, you can actually, so you understand, if it is yeah. sine and cosine, you get ellipse, right? If it yeah. is secant and tangent, okay. you get a hyperbola, correct? So now you can correlate to whatever we have done so far in terms of these equations and do the need for it, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, you're, are you absolutely clear about all this? Yeah, I'm clear about it, yeah. Okay. I feel good. Can you summarize your learnings? We can uh, then end the class here. Okay. Yeah. So basically, in today's class, we went over the different types of parametric equations and how we can, like, and, and like different shapes and like the, the different shapes and graphs that they create, and also how we convert them into different forms using trigonometry identities. Okay. Perfect. Parametric equations are written in independent variable. In this figure, you see three parametric equations being modeled with different 
curves. One of them is an ellipse, which has an equation x equals to a sine t, y equals to b cos t. If a and b are not equal, it results into an ellipse, which is the figure right in the center. We can represent the parabola with a parametric equation x equals to minus a t plus a, y equals to b t square plus c. The curve in blue, which you see here. And then we have another curve here, which is a hyperbola. Its equation is x equals to a secant t, y equals to b tangent t. So you have seen in these examples how we could write parametric equations, plot the curves, and also write an equation in the rectangular form from the given parametric equation. So Aryan, have you understood how we work with parametric equations? How do we graph and relate them with the rectangular coordinate equations? Yeah, I feel I feel good about it. Yeah, at first I was a little shaky, but then yeah, I feel I feel much better now. Anything else which you would like to know about these equations? Yeah. Okay, so, equations. Yeah. So how would you like use parametric equations in real life situations? Very interesting question. Very. Interesting. See, uh, you, you have just started learning these parametric equations. We teach them to students who take up calculus. And uh, there we are looking into many other like, you know, parameters to work with. And as the name suggests, it helps us to resolve the things and uh, model the real life situations in many different ways. Uh, yeah. I'll give you an example. Like you go for rides and all, and you see these rides are very complicated. I mean, for example, you're sitting in a seat there and the whole arm is moving and the seat is moving in a different direction. You see that? Yeah. There's so many things going on. And all these machines have been modeled, right? They have been functions which are working behind doing all the calculations and all these things are very systematic, correct? So that is a huge application of parametric equations. I will just show you uh, how they are by sharing whiteboard this time with you, okay? okay. Let me just share the screen and then I'll explain you how parametric equations can help us understand many concepts, okay? So yeah. as I was saying, we'll make it simple to understand. Let's say this is a coordinate plane. So that is a two dimensional figure. So we'll relate our things to two dimensional, keep it two dimensional for now. And let's think about a ride, right? So you've gone to a fun park, uh, Disney World or somewhere, and you see something. And let me just draw a section of your ride. Right? I know rides are very complicated these days. Let's say there is some big arm there, and you're sitting here in, in some, you're sitting here, right? Enjoying the ride. <laughs> yeah. This arm is, let us say, moving at an angle theta, like it moves like this. Let us say, it is moving like this. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And the whole ride moves. Theta could be anything uh, between zero to 360. And this part is also moving. This part is also moving. So you are going in circles, and that makes things very complicated. Correct? So, and let us say the rate of movement is different to give more excitement. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm showing that this, where you're sitting, uh, is moving at a different rate. It is moving at two theta rate. Yeah. It's moving faster than the arm. Okay? It's moving faster than the arm. So, uh, then it means, uh, Relatively, if you look at, I mean, I should have drawn like this. I should have drawn like this. It is moving. This is theta. That is 2 theta. This is 2 theta, right? And the whole angle becomes 3 theta. You see that? Yes. I mean, this is already moving with theta, your seat. And then your seat is further moving, right? Yeah. <laughs> Going up, down, circle, and whatever. I don't know what. You may be doing horizontally, but at a different rate. Let that be 2 theta, for example. Then, okay. with respect to the ground, the whole movement, your movement at that place is 3 theta, correct? 
your movement that place is 3 theta now see how the parametric equations come into picture if i am looking at this particular position of yours then since you are theta away let's say the arm is r length of the arm is r it could be 10 20 whatever in r in that case what is the x coordinate value it is r cos theta right r cos theta yeah. and this is r sin theta yeah yeah and let us say this place yeah. which is there this is this has got some length and you are sitting at this particular point and your movement is from there to theta effectively your position if you compare has is going through 3 theta right 2 theta of your movement and theta of the r movement yeah 3 theta and if yeah. this is let's say uh, let's keep this as a the arm of uh, your thing where you are placed in that place this point here is a cos of 3 theta and the height is a sin of 3 theta correct yeah from the ground so overall if i write the value of x what is x equals to x is r cos theta yeah. a cos 3 theta yeah <laughs> y equals to y is r sin theta plus a sin 3 theta that is it yeah but in a way i have got your final position you see that yeah so i can now model the movement of your position with okay. the help of parametric equation we can work with this and let me since we draw we had drawn the graph and shown you the position we could draw the graph of this equation also yeah and we can do many other things for example rate of change how much anxiety or thrill you are getting at a particular instance of time because of this right we can have a rate of change at this equation and figure th those things out that is what we okay. do in calculus is that clear to you okay but yeah the yeah. thing here is to understand that even in this complicated position which is a real life position using parametric equation very easily we can actually find your position and work with it correct so that yeah. is a huge um, advantage of parametric equations do you understand and appreciate it <laughs> yeah right so the fun rides could lead to fun mathematics also <laughs> using parametric equation you will love them <laughs> <laughs> Okay then I hope that was a good learning uh, session uh, keep sharing with me whatever uh, you come across and we will sort out all the difficulties to ensure that you are right on the top always as you have been All right yeah Okay great then we'll end the class now thank you thank you thank you bye bye all right So in this video we worked on the worksheet provided by Aryan we looked into all kinds of equations understood how can we draw a graph of the given set of equations called parametric equations since they were in parameter t in this particular case we also derived rectangular formula from the parametric equation and relating the two we confirm that our graph was perfect i hope all this gives you insight to how can we work with parametric equations very easily hope you find it interesting and useful feel free to write your comments share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best